there, welcome to this week's video where I'm going to talk about how a horse stores its information in memory. Memory is the storage of information and this becomes very important for higher learning for all living beings. In general, we refer to memory as different types. Different types of memory serve different purposes, much like our computer does. And both us and horses share the fact that we have different types of memory. One of those types is sensory memory. For example, we learn fairly quickly that if we touch something very hot, we need to react instantly. It's a sensory memory. There are also long-term memory, short-term memory, working memory. So there are different places and different ways that our memory work. So what are the differences between us and horses and how our memories work? So one of the important differences is how we store memories and really muddy them with perceptions. Um, we can discuss those memories with people. Our memories can slightly change over time. Um, a horse doesn't do that, so its memory is really quite pure. The priorities of storing memory between us and horses are very different. Their priority is to store memory to help them be able to find food and escape predators. So horses are really good at associative memory. So they're really good at making links between things and keeping that when the association has been made. Sensory memory is the memory retained by central nervous system. So that is the immediate response to pain, etc. And really only about 2% of sensory memories get retained as a longer term memory. One thing that's really important to horses is their place dependent memory. So when horses are learning something, they take in everything about their environment. So for example, when you're teaching a new horse something, it's not only learning your cues, but it's learning uh, what place in the arena or what place on a particular trail ride that you're doing that learning with and all of the associated environmental cues. This is a really handy thing to know about horses because if you are trying to teach them a new response, then taking them back where all of those environmental cues are the same is going to be really helpful. So for example, when you're starting to teach a horse to canter, going to the same spot in the arena is going to help that come together. In reality, by doing this, a horse is putting a map together of environmental cues to help. So to make that association, for example, to be not about where in the arena, but to be about the canter, we need some repetition and just slow changes of those environmental cues. Another great example to use is training a cross country horse to go through a water jump. You can train and train and train your horse over one particular water jump and get them in. And then the next water jump, because there are so many different environmental cues, the horse doesn't recognize it as water. As riders, we can get really frustrated saying, I just had you in water yesterday. But to the horse, this is different. So the way to do that kind of associative training is to make sure you've trained mm, at least five different types of water jumps. At this point, the horse can then put into its longer term memory, it was the water that was the consistent cue. So of all of these memory systems, which one do they use for which training task, when and why? Well, the answer is it's, it's nearly impossible to either control or predict. So we need to get clever about training our horses when we expect it to use memory. Where a horse stores a memory is really dependent on so very many things. It's age even, it's health, definitely it's level of stress, and of course the environment that they are in. Whatever way we create this memory, our aim is normally to get this horse to commit this to a long-term memory. To do that, repetition is so important to the horse and repetition of the right response, obviously not the incorrect response. Sometimes it's simply our timing that gives them the indication that the incorrect response is the thing they need to remember. But 
interesting thing is that horses form long-term memories very well. In fact, it's said that their long-term memory is as good as an elephant. The pros and cons of this are that every moment you spend with your horse is a training moment. <clears throat> but this means even when you're not paying attention, you can be accidentally um, repeating behavior that you don't want from your horse and they will keep that memory for a very long time. Bad experiences are really important to a horse. So if we go back to the beginning where I discussed their priority of um, memories, it is escaping predators and getting food. In a bad environment, in a stress environment, that will be committed to long-term memory much quicker because it's a high priority for the horse. Sometimes we can see this in um, unexpected defensive behavior from a horse where we don't know that it's even maybe had a bad experience or something has stressed it at that particular point, given the environmental cues that they take on board when they store these memories. So there's been many studies actually of how long horses can retain memories. And one of the ones that is used as an example are horses and ponies being shown 20 different sets of patterns. One of these patterns provided the horse with a food reward. After six months of not practicing this at all, 85% of horses retained the knowledge of which pattern it was that gave them food six months later. Now that's with no training in between. The other thing that I hinted at earlier was stress. Stress dependent memory is very important to the horse as well. We know inherently that a stressed horse does not learn as quickly or as easily as a nice calm horse. Stress really affects the working memory and this is the memory that the horse is using, hopefully, when you are working with it to do some training. And we want that to be solid memory. So keeping a horse calm at this point is really important. Though of course, calmness is important in any of your ridden work to um, biomechanically to get the right muscular response for your horse. Um, but it's also very important to get the right training response. So a horse with a naturally nervous disposition is going to find these things a lot harder to learn um, and any horse who's currently feeling under stress for any other reason, their learning um, capacity is really quite diminished. The reason for this is it doesn't only affect the memory, it also affects their current concentration. Now this seems really common sense. However, I do feel that a lot of people don't consider this when they get frustrated that a horse isn't learning something that it should be learning. Of course, when you talk about temperament and disposition, there's such a variety um, between individual horses. So it's actually quite important to know your horse at this point. So what are my take home messages? Remember, horse is going to retain the memory of a bad experience for a very long time. Every opportunity, every interaction with your horse is creating a training environment and sometimes unknowingly we're creating a negative training environment. Know your own horse and their individual temperament to be able to understand when they're calm enough to be able to concentrate and commit training to memory. Remember how important place dependent memory is to a horse. So help the horse get the correct response by trying to maintain as many of the environmental cues as well as your aid until you have something solidly in place and then you can change that slowly. This will help the horse learn better and retain the memory of that experience. And lastly, stress. When your horse is stressed or nervous, this is not the time to try and create new memories or new learning experiences. You must calm a horse down to give it the right opportunity to be able to concentrate on the task at hand and then store that memory in the correct place in their brain. Thanks for listening. Now I'm back again. Um, I am committing to produce these again weekly. So please subscribe to the channel, click like on the button and any comments are welcome. Thanks and I'll see you next week.